Right, so the next topic is the liquid liquid extraction. So this is the first part of liquid liquid extraction. At the end of this class, you should be able to, number one, explain the mechanism of liquid liquid extraction process. Number two, plot the phase diagrams for ternary liquid liquid system in the form of either equilateral triangle or the right angle triangular diagram and also rectangular diagram. Next is to perform material balance calculation for single stage counter current extraction process. Okay, so introduction to extraction process. So what is extraction? So let's say if you have a mixture of a carrier and a solute, so you want to separate the solute from the carrier. I mean, you just want to separate A from B uh, using another chemical and another compound, the so solvent. In this case, we use the solvent. So in uh, if in distillation, the liquid is partially vaporized to create another phase, i.e. the vapor. If, if in distillation, the liquid mixture, we use energy to vaporize and then create the vapor phase and then uh, we condense. Um, however, in extraction process, the separation of the components depends on the uh, it's when, uh, chemical, chemical affinity. Okay, so in LLE, the two phases are chemically different. So, in other words, um, let's say if you want to separate a couple who are deeply in love, let's say, so you want to separate from the couple person A and person B, you want to separate person A, you want to take person A from person B. So, you have to find another person whom person A likes, but B doesn't like, you know, it's like a love triangle. So, you, A is in love with B but you want to take A away from B. So you got to find person C who um, A loves, but uh, B doesn't love C and doesn't C doesn't love B back. So, I mean, just to uh, put it in simpler terms for extraction process. So eventually A will follow C and B will be left alone. So that's the same for extraction process. So in this case, the person C is the solvent, which we hope to have a high affinity with the solute. And then when they mix together, then the solute will be uh, dissolved into solvent. And then the, the and this carrier will be in a separate phase. So then we will end up with two phases, uh, which are the raffinate phase and the extract phase. So the raffinate phase is the phase which is rich in the carrier compound, the uh, red dot compound, and the extract phase is the phase which is uh, rich in the solvent compound and also contain most of the extracted solute. Okay, but there is no perfect separation process in this world. So no matter how um, chemically miscible or chemically likable the solute to be solvent, there must be some of the solute which uh, is left in the raffinate phase. So LLE can be used as an alternative to distillation or evaporation as a uh, separation process. So what do you think is the separating agent in LLE? Is it mass separating agent or energy separating agent? And what would happen to the phase of the mass separating agent, i.e. the solvent. So some thinking points here for you to answer. And also, if LLE, liquid liquid extraction, is an alternative to distillation, when exactly would LLE be more preferable to distillation? Why would we choose LLE over distillation? So these are some uh, cases when LLE is preferred over distillation. So, for example, number one is if the dissolved or complex organic substance, uh, it, it, it mean the solute is a dissolved or complex inorganic substance, inorganic or aqueous solution. I mean, you can easily separate the inorganic substance from the organic or, in, or aqueous solution. Number two, if the solute or contaminant is present in small concentration, such as say color former or hormones in animal oil is very small, so it's not economical to to use distillation because distillation would require a lot of energy. Also, if uh, you want to separate a high boiling component present in less relatively small quantity, again a small quantity, smaller concentration, then if you want to recover heat sensitive materials, 
um, so distillation, as you know, would have uh, you would need to use energy to boil the mixture. But if you want to reduce the boiling point of the mixture, then maybe you need to use vacuum distillation. So you reduce the pressure and then you reduce the boiling point. But if you can use uh, liquid liquid extraction, it may be less expensive. So because you don't have to have a some equipment to induce the vacuum. Okay, another number five is when you use LLE instead of distillation, when you want to separate the mixture according to chemical type rather than according to relative volatility. Number six is if you want to separate the close boiling point liquid where solubility difference can be exploited. An example here is a benzene and cyclohexane. So the difference in the boiling point of benzene and cyclohexane is only 0 0.6 degrees Celsius. So it would be hard to, the relative volatility is very small. So better use uh, LLE. So we can exploit the solubility difference. Maybe benzene is more soluble in a uh, certain solvent and cyclohexane is not really, uh, have, doesn't really have affinity towards that solvent. So then we can separate benzene from the mixture. And also number seven, lastly, uh, if you want to separate mixtures that form azeotropes, because azeotropes, is, as you know, is when the there is no um, change in the liquid and vapor phase composition. So it would be hard to get a higher purity if you have reached this composition at that temperature. So you may want to use LLE, liquid liquid extraction. So these are just some um, examples. There may be more than seven reasons and seven situations when LLE is preferred over distillation. You can find out more. So let's have a look at the equilibrium relations in extraction. So phase rule, you know the Gibbs phase rule. So generally, if we have a liquid-liquid system, um, we will have normally three compounds, or we would group them into three groups of compounds. So compound A, the solute, compound B, the, sol the carrier, and compound C, the solvent, and there will be two phases in equilibrium, i.e. the raffinate phase or the carrier rich phase and also the extract phase. So bear in mind these two phases in equilibrium are both in liquid phase. It's just that there are two distinct liquid layers like oil and water. Uh, so two phase. So Gibbs phase rule says that the degrees of freedom F equals to C minus B plus two where C is the number of components, so our C equals to 3, and the phase in equilibrium is 2, so 3 minus 2 uh, plus 2 equals to 3. So we have a 3 degree of freedom, the degree of freedom is 3. What would be the three variables that we can uh, manipulate in liquid-liquid extraction? Those would be the temperature, pressure, and the concentration. What concentration? So in this case, if you have a heat mixture, okay, you have heat, so heat here is your component A and component B. So you want to separate component A. A here is the solute. Then you have the, your solvent, component C. So you know the amount of A, B, and C. So you can calculate the feed composition. I mean, this composition of the incoming uh, mixture. Then when you mix this mixture, feed and solvent together in an equipment, then you let them settle. You let them settle. You will have uh, two layers, uh, raffinate and extract well which one is at the upper phase or at the lower phase it doesn't really matter it actually depends on the density of the uh, liquid phases so these are the two phases then the concentration in the two phases you can be specified you can be specified or you can these are your product specification what are the xa and xc and also the ya and yc so we use x for the raffinate phase and y composition for the extract phase then then the third concentration i.e the composition of component b can be obtained by uh, summation of mass or more fraction equal to one so here although we have two distinct liquid phases we can treat them like what we did in um, distillation and absorption where we have uh, vapor and liquid phases so here the raffinate phase is the L phase with X compositions, and the extract phase is the V phase with Y compositions. Okay, so if you put a pointer here, then 
it will help you to calculate the phase diagram. I mean, if you put the uh, composition at any point on the ternary phase diagram, it will help you to calculate. Okay, for example, this one, okay, I put here the dot, then for component B, 0 starts from this point, and 1 uh, is this point. So here, you have 0 0.25 of component B. So XB is 0 0.25. So for component A, uh, you read here. So 0 to 1 for component A. So component A, XA is 0 0.59. And for component C, uh, this is 1 for component C, 0 for component C here. So you drag the line here, you get 0 0.16. You can try to play around and put the uh, point anywhere on the ternary diagram. It will help you to read uh, what's the composition. Okay, so let's say if you have the ternary diagram and you plot them and you will have the equilibrium data. So if in previously you are familiar with the VLE, you know, the vapor liquid equilibrium, the LE diagram, where you have the uh, X and Y coordinates for vapor phase and for liquid phase respectively. So you have the curve. So this would be the corresponding vapor and liquid compositions at equilibrium. But now, your phase diagram is the ternary phase diagram because now you have three components. So let's say if you have this... Uh, Right, uh, not, not right angle, what's this? Equilateral, equilateral triangle uh, phase diagram. So if you have component A here, component B here, and component C here, if the shape of this curve is like this, it means that uh, component A and component B are partially miscible. Okay, whenever there's a gap um, in between the curve here, it means that partial miscibility between the components A and B. Um, but the liquid C, dissolves completely in component A and component B. In this case, uh, it may be that C is the solute, maybe A is the carrier, I mean either A or B is one of them is the carrier and one of them is the solvent, okay? So C can dissolve in A and in B. Uh, but A and B, they don't like each other, so that's why there's a miscibility gap in this case. So the two-phase region uh, is included inside the curve. Okay, so here is the two-phase region where you have the separate phases of graphenate and extract. You can see two distinct layers, but you can read the composition from the point here. This is the end point and A and B. Okay, uh, A. And then outside the curve is the one-phase region. So this is one-phase region where if you have a composition, let's say, of component A, B, and C that lies here, that lies here, then it lies in the one-phase region and you cannot see two distinct liquid phases. But if the composition of A and B and C lies somewhere in the curve here or here, when it, wherever in the curve, then it's possible to get a two-phase region when they become equilibrium. So let's say if you have an original mixture with composition M, um yeah let's say if you have speed mix speed plus solvent you mix them and then let them to equilibrate and settle you will end up with two phases one is raffinate and one is solvent so these are the two phases so the mixture with composition m will separate into two phases a and b which will be on the equilibrium phi line going through point m so m here is the composition of the feed and solvent because you know what the amount of A and the amount of B in the feed and the amount of C in the solvent so you can calculate what is XA, XB and XC in the mixture, the feed mixture, feed plus solvent. Then this is point M here. So when we come equilibrium, it will separate into two phases. Let's say if A is the carrier, then A here is the raffinate phase. So A phase here is raffinate and then the B is solvent, then the small D here is the solvent phase. So it will separate into two phases. So then we can read what is the composition of component A, component B, component C in the raffinate phase, and what is the composition of component A, component B, and component C in the uh, extract phase. And there's also a point P uh, on the curve. So that is called, called the plate point. 
uh, at the plate point, the two phases are identical, meaning there's no composition change. Okay. And the other than the equi equilateral triangle, we can also plot the uh, equilibrium coordinates con con composition using uh, rectangular coordinates, meaning using right angle triangle coordinates. Over time, it's more useful because this is the time the, the type of draft paper that is widely available and you can use Excel easily to plot the y and x axis, I mean the horizontal and the vertical axis. Okay, so uh, let's see here, for example, we have a mixture of acetic acid of component A, water component B, isopropyl ether is component C. So here acetic acid is your solute, water is your carrier and isopropyl ether is your solvent. Okay, the solvent pairs um, B and C are partially miscible. Acetic acid can dissolve both in water and in so the ether. So here, if you have a look at the right angle triangle diagram here, the concentration of A is plotted on the horizontal axis and that of C on the vertical axis. Okay, look at this diagram. The horizontal axis is the mass or mole fraction of A either in the X phase, i.e. the raffinate phase, and also in the Y phase, i.e. the uh, extract phase. Or, and also the mass, the, the vertical axis here shows the mass fraction or mole fraction of component C, uh, either in the extract or raffinate phases, respectively. So um, you can, uh, later I will show you how to plot this graph. So the point here is, um, we just take component A and component C to be on the graph and for component B, we can get the concentration by the summation of mole or mass fraction equals to 1. And also, you can convert this um, right angle triangle equilibrium diagram into a rectangular coordinate where you just have a y and x axis for, com for one component only. Because if you uh, look at this uh, diagram here is for two components, component A and component C, but in different phases. But if you convert it into the rectangular diagram at the bottom, it's just the composition of A in the raffinate phase and composition of A in the uh, ether phase or the extract phase. Okay, But you can see the corresponding point here. So for, for example, got point I here, you can just bring it, because this is XA, because it's the raffinate layer, you can bring it to this coordinate and whereas YA would be um, this, this point, then you can bring it down and get this. Uh, this is your Y, where it corresponds to the XA. Don't worry, I'll show you how to plot the graph. How to plot the graph. So let's say you are given the equilibrium data, uh, acetic acid, water, and isopropyl ether system, liquid-liquid equilibria data, in this case here is uh, at 293 Kelvin or 20 degrees Celsius. So bear in mind here, these are the ternary data. Uh, so water layer is the uh, raffinate phase. And the isopropyl ether layer is the solvent phase. So here is your Y phase and here is your X phase. So here you have XA, XB and XC. Here you have YA, YB and y c um, right so if you plot this data on the graph you will get what would uh, what did, like what we have seen before so first when you are given the concentration um, this is my preference i like to convert everything to fraction instead of in percentage because I'm more comfortable reading the composition from 0 to 1 instead of from 0 to 100, but it's up to you. You don't have to do this. The, the principle is the same, but I like to do this. Okay, so first you convert the uh, mass percent to mass fraction. So I don't think I need to show you how to do it. So it's still the same here, where uh, this is your XA, XB, and XC, only in terms of 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 100. So YA, YB, and YC. So after you have um, denoted where is YA, XA uh, in the graph, I mean in the table, so now you can take those values and plot onto the uh, graph. You can use Excel or you can use your own graph paper, but yeah, just better or easier use Excel for this. Okay, so um, the Y 
YA, YB, YC at the right hand side of the table can be plotted on this uh, side here, equilibrium points in the extract phase uh, ether layer. If you have a look at the last row of the uh, table, you can see that this point 0 0.362 is this uh, Y of A and the 0 0.487 is the Y of C. And also the next, I mean the second last row of the table here, you can see, I mean you can read. This is the YA at that point and this is the YC at that point. So you can just uh, repeat the same steps for the other points and plot on the uh, Excel file, I mean Excel to get this graph. And repeat also for the raffinate layer, i.e. the blue points here, uh, the equilibrium points in the raffinate uh, phase, i.e. the water layer. So here are the X composition, the X phase. So look at the last point uh, at the bottom of the table, 0 0.464 is the X of A and 0 0.165 is the X of C at equilibrium. Okay, so then you will end up with the graph like what we have seen in the example. So same, same thing, it's just that the in the graph here is the uh, curve. So if you want to make it a curve, you can connect the dots. Okay, connect the dots. And it looks exactly the same with what you have in the book. Okay. Um, and then next thing is to draw the tie line. So tie line, uh, since your table is given in such a way that it has two separate columns. One is extract or uh, raffinate. Maybe here is raffinate for you. And extract. Okay. So each row here represent one tie line. This one represent another tie line. And so on until the end of the table. Okay. Depending on how many rows you have, how many tie lines there. So this and this is one tie line. So you can just connect these two lines to give you one tie line. And this is one tie line another tie line and so on and so on until you reach at the end of this uh, graph okay so those are the tie lines equilibrium lines so when you have a mixture mixture point anywhere on the graph let's say here this one is point m then point m when you leave it to equilibrate leave it to settle and then get two layers two separate layers as extract and raffinate then it shall separate into two phases so you should have another tie line but since this point m does not lie on the tie line so you have to approximate a tie line so this would be the point a in the extra raffinate phase this would be your point b at the extract phase where you can read the x of a and x of c at equilibrium and y of c and y of a at equilibrium uh, okay so that's the use of the tie lines to get the equilibrium compositions another form of diagram phase diagram for LLE is if you plot the mass fraction of solute in the raffinate and extract layer respectively so at the bottom axis here is the XA and at the vertical axis here is the YA. So since in the table just now, you, you have already um, take note of which one is XA, uh, X phase and which one is uh, Y phase, then you just take these values as the uh, horizontal axis and these values for the vertical axis and you will get this. And if you want to connect the dots together, then you shall get an equilibrium. So this is um, like what I mentioned previously, the tie line is just connecting the two dots if, if you're given the data in, in, in the form of the table just now. Okay, so there are different types of phase diagrams. So what you have seen previously is the type 1 phase diagram. So another case is where you have a uh, different type of phase diagram which is in this case b and c pair are miscible and a and c pair are partially miscible uh, meaning here 
BNC partially mutable, AMT partially mutable, but the point, I mean the components A and B are fully mutable. So here is your one phase region. Here. And uh, inside the curve is your two phase region. And another area here is your one phase region. Okay, look at phase diagram as a map where when you're given a concentration, given a point on the map, you can know in what region are you, whether two phase or one phase region. So in this example, I mean in, in this case, a type two phase diagram, examples of system can be uh, styrene as component A, ethyl benzene component B and diethylene glycol as component C, or another system is uh, chlorobenzene, methyl ethyl ketone and uh, water. So this kind of phase diagram is uh, called a type 2 phase diagram, which is less common than what have you have seen in type 1 phase diagram. So for phase splitting of ternary mixtures, it depends on the solubility or insolubility of components A, B and C. So in this case, in the first part, I mean in the left hand side of the diagram here, uh, for components A and B, which are mutually insoluble, so A won't exist where B exists and C won't exist where A exists. So if you have the fit mixture of component A and B and you add a solvent component C, since A and C are mutually insoluble, only B is soluble in both component A and C, so your extract phase may, may contain components B and C only with maybe a little amount of component A and your raffinate phase R will contain component A and B only with maybe a small amount of component C which is negligible. So this is uh, the distribution of components based on the solubility or insolubility of the components involved. At the, at the right hand side of this diagram, if, if components A and C are partially soluble, so if you have a fit mixture containing A and B and you add a solvent C and A is partially soluble in C and B is the solute in this case, is soluble in both A and C. So your extract phase and your raffinate phase both contain um, all three components, A, B and C. So it doesn't mean that in this case separation did not occur, no. It just means that the distribution of components um, are varied. Okay, maybe in the extract phase, you have a higher concentration of component B with less concentration of component B in the raffinate phase, meaning you want to distribute component B, the solid, the target component uh, into two phases, the extract and the raffinate. Okay. Okay, so for ternary diagrams, we have uh, two types of ternary diagrams, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is the most common uh, phase diagram. There is only one immiscible pair of compound, which is the carrier and the solvent. So ideally, we want the solvent to only uh, be able to dissolve the solute A and not dissolve the solute C. Okay. The larger two phase region between C and S, meaning greater immiscibility between the carrier and solvent. So in this case, the distance between these uh, two points in the curve indicates the, the degree of immiscibility between the carrier, the component C and the solvent component S. Um, so if you have another diagram, let's say, where this, uh, the region here is small, so this smaller region indicate it is not as immiscible as this one. And also the distance between the top of two phase region to the apex A indicate the range of feed composition that can be separated using the solvent S. Okay, meaning here the distance between the top of the two phase region and the apex A indicate the range of feed composition. So the, the, the larger the distance, meaning the um, the larger is the range of feed composition that can be separated using the solvent S. Okay, so for type 2, it is, it is less common. So we have two pairs of immiscible compounds. The solute and solvent are only miscible in certain proportion. This is not the ideal one. So 
mostly if we uh, most of the time if we want to select a solvent we, we you would want to select a solvent that is only able to dissolve component a but sometimes that is not possible so you may end up with the type 2 uh, phase diagram where the solute may dissolve both component a and c but maybe it can dissolve more component a compared to component c so you still use it as a solvent Okay, let's take a look at an example two here, material balance for equilibrium layers. Let's say if you have an original mixture weighing 100 kg, contains 30 kg of isopropyl ether component C, the solvent, uh, 10 kg of acetic acid A, the solute, and 60 kg of water B, the carrier, if equilibrated, and the equilibrium phases separated. What are the composition of the two equilibrium phase. So first you have this mixture where you have um, 30 kg of isopropyl ether out of 100 kg. So you have Xc equals to 0 0.3, Xa equals to 0 0.1 and Xb equals to 0 0.6. So you let them mix and become equilibrium. After some time, it will have two layers. Okay, when it becomes equilibrium, you have um, raffinate and extract phases. So you want to know the composition of the two equilibrium phases. You want to know here what is the Xa and Xc. Extract what is the Ya and Yc. So extract is the Y phase, raffinate is the X phase. So we just read from A and C because B we can just minus 1, I mean 1 minus Xa and Xc. So to, to do this you need to have the to, to, to use the equilibrium data. So let's use this equilibrium data of acetic acid, water, and isopropyl ether that we have uh, previously. So first you need to plot the point M, the mixture point, uh, on the graph. So here you can plot Xa equals to 0 0.1 here and Xc equals to 0 0.3. So you get your uh, black dot there as your mixture coordinate then when it reach uh, when it reaches equilibrium uh, you need a tie line to read what are the compositions of xa xc and ya and yc but since in this case the um, component uh, the mixture m the original graph uh, it doesn't have this green line here what i show here is um, the graph that i have drawn an approximate tie line so originally it, the green line does not exist so if your, let's say your mixture M falls here, then you need to draw another tie line. Okay, you need to draw a approximate tie line based on the, uh, the, the two tie lines besides. And then you take this uh, equilibrium composition. But in our case now, our mixture point is at the black dot there. So we don't worry about this. So let, then we can read the compositions. So here, would be the composition of your X, okay, raffinate phase. So you can read here your X A, and you can read here is your X C. Then for the Y composition, from here you can read the Y A, and from here you can read the Y C. So meaning, uh, I mean to go all the way down lah. So if you construct the tie line properly, and then you can read that at the extract phase, uh, Ya equals to 0 0.04, here about 0 0.04, and Yc equals to 0 0.94. Then you can calculate Yb by Y minus Ya minus Yc. Similarly, at the raffinate phase, at the uh, X phase, Xa is 0 0.12 if you read it properly, and Xc is about 0 0.02. So Xb is 0.86. So it makes sense because at the raffinate phase, raffinate phase is the phase rich in carrier and the extract phase is the phase rich in the solvent. So the composition has to make sense. Have a look at the single stage equilibrium extraction and derive the level arm rule for graphical addition. This is to be used with the rectangular extraction phase diagram chart. Let's have a look at figure A. Figure A is here. Uh, we have two streams L, KG and B, KG containing components A, B and C mixed to give a mixture stream M uh, 
kg in total mass. So V is your solvent phase and L is your raffinate phase. So V um, is the Y phase. So YA and YC are the components. L is your um, X phase. So XA and XC, the component composition. So when you mix these two, so M equals to L plus V. And then the uh, corresponding mixture of component A and component C, you put XA sub M, XC sub M to indicate that it's the compositions of component A and C in the mixture. Next is to proceed with the overall mass balance, input equals to output. So input is B plus L, output equals to M. So And then if you do a component balance on A, so BYA plus uh, LXA equals to MXAM and do the same for C. Then uh, you can just try to pause the video if you want to derive this uh, equation on your own. Derive these two equations. One is in terms of A and one is in terms of C. You can feel free to pause it now. Or I, if you decide to proceed, then I just show you how to derive for component A. So you have uh, B plus L equals to M and BYA plus LXA equals to M, X, A, M. Then uh, you can replace just B plus L, X, A, M. Then B, Y, A plus L, X, A equals to B, X, A, M plus L, X, A, M. Divide everything by B, uh, you get Y, A plus L over B, X, A equals to X, A, M plus L over B, X, A, M. Then you put L over B. On one side, XAM minus XA equals to uh, YA minus XAM. Then you get L over B equals to YA minus XAM over XAM minus XA, which is the same with uh, this equation. So you can repeat for uh, component C. Next is uh, after you have derived these two equations, you can uh, rearrange the equation to get this relationship okay so this relationship basically means xc minus xcm so xc minus xcm is this distance and divided by xa minus xcm is this distance equal to xcm minus yc this distance divided by xam minus ya this distance so it just means that this relationship just means that the points L, M, and B must lie on a straight line. So since the uh, points L, M, and B lies on a straight line, we can use the properties of similar right triangles to get the ratio of L and B by measuring the distance between the lines, uh, between the points. So here, L and B equal L over B equals to uh, this distance. I mean this distance divided by this distance. Okay, BM over LM. Similarly, if you want to uh, get the ratio of L over M, i.e. the uh, ratio of L over L plus V equals to the distance between B and M divided by the distance between point B and point L. Yeah. So here, although the units are shown in kg, the same equations also hold for units kilomole, mole fraction, uh, pound mole, and etc. As long as your uh, units are consistent. Okay. In this example three here, we want to calculate the amount of L and V by using material balance calculation and also by using Leverrule method. Given the uh, mixture containing one hundred kg and the composition of A in the mixture is zero point one, and we use the compositions of the two equilibrium layers that we have obtained in example two. So for part A, using the material balance calculation, so you have L plus V equals to 100 kg and your XAM equals to 0 0.10. And previously, uh, the equilibrium concentrations are XA, uh, YA equals to, wait, YA equals to 0 0.04, YC equals to 0 0.94, 
xa equals to 0.12, xc equals to 0.02. So these are your equilibrium concentration. So first, uh, we're going to solve for L and B by using a material balance equation. So write down the material balance equation for component A, B, Y, A plus L, X, A equals to M, X, M. I mean, X, A, M. So V times 0 0.04 plus uh, X, A 0.12 L equals to M is 100. And X, A, M is 0 0.10. So you have uh, one equation. So you have two equations and two unknown. One equation here and another one equation here. You can solve for uh, V and L. So solve and then get um, V equals to 25 kg and L equals to 75 kg. So this is a QOU's material balance to solve for L and B. Okay, so for part B is to use the lever rule to calculate the amounts of L and B. So let's say you have the um, equilibrium data. Uh, okay, you have drawn the equilibrium data previously. And then this is your point. This is point M. This is your uh, raffinate point. This is your extract point where you already get the values of YA, YC, and the XC, and the XA. Right? So you know the values already the same. But here we don't know. Uh, we don't want to use this value but rather we want to measure the distance. So here is your point L. Here is your point B. Then using the level rule, you can use uh, the equation L over M equals to the point Moving on to the single stage equilibrium extraction. So uh, previously you have seen something like this in figure A for absorption and for distillation, for single stage absorption and single stage distillation. Only thing is that for previously you have something vertical, like you have V0 uh, and V1 uh, and then L2 and uh, L1 uh, previously. But here, uh, for liquid liquid we do it horizontally so this is your stage number one so the liquid coming in is denoted with uh, L0 and the solvent another liquid phase coming in is the denoted with V sub 2 so the liquid stream um, I mean the raffinate and extract layers coming out so extract is V1 and uh, raffinate is L1 they would be in equilibrium with each other and then um, we can let the Y be the compositions of the V streams and X is the composition of the L streams. So then we do the material balance equation where it's just simply input equals to output and also equals to the mixture lah. Okay, mixture. So L0 plus V2 equals to V1 plus L1 equals to M. M is the total mixture between L and B. So if you want to do a component balance on A and also on C, you will get the respective equations as shown here. Okay, so since A plus B plus C, the mole fractions are equal to 1, the equations for B is not needed. So to solve for the three equations, we can use the equilibrium phase diagram shown in figure B here. Okay, so if we are given the amounts and compositions of L0 and V2 respectively, so L0 is your liquid mixture and your V2 is your solvent. If you know the compositions XA0 and XC0 and YA2 and YC2 here, you can plot uh, the compositions on the graph. And you can calculate the M. M is simply 
L0 plus V2. And also you can calculate the point XAM and point XCM. Okay, the mixture composition of A and C. So the points L0, V2 and M can be plotted on the graph based on the coordinates. And the tie line is drawn through point M by approximation, um, i.e. from trial and error or interpolation between the experimental line. Just approximate a tie line. Uh, so this is your point M. So we say that when the mixture is equilibrated, at equilibrium, you will get this extract phase B1 and the raffinate phase L1. So that point will be on represented on the graph by this line and it has to go through a tie line so then you can read the compositions of the equilibrium phases this one will give you yc at equilibrium and the yc1 last okay so here you will have ya1 and yc1 and here you get ya1 so from this point you can get uh, the equilibrium concentration of the stream l1 so here is XA1 and then here you will get XB1. Okay, XA1 and XB1. So after you get these uh, compositions of YA1, YC1, XA1 and XB1, you can calculate the amount of flow rates of B1 and L1 by material balance or using the level arm rule like what we did in the previous example. Example 4, for a single stage equilibrium extraction, let's say you have a mixture weighing 1000 kg containing 23.58% of acetone and 76.58% of water uh, is to be extracted with uh, by a 500 kg MIK isobutyl ketone in a single stage extraction. Determine the amount and composition of the extract and raffinate phases. You are given the liquid-liquid equilibrium data for acetone water MIK system at this temperature range here. So if you look at this composition data, it looks different from the liquid liquid equilibrium data that you have for acetone water and isopropyl ether previously. Okay, so previously your equilibrium data are given like this. So you divide this table into two parts, one for raffinate and one for raffinate, one for extract phase. And then for the raffinate phase, you know what is the XA, XB, and XC. And the extract phase, you, you know which one is YA, YB, and uh, YC. But here, you are not given the data in the same form like what is shown in the previous table. Here, you are only given the composition data, so you have to figure out where is your extract and where is your raffinate phase. So this is the um, solubility curve. And this would give you the distribution data, i.e. how the acetone composition distribute between the water phase and the um, MIK phase. So this is in the extract phase and this is in the raffinate phase. So this is the XA and this is the YA at the tie line. So from this table, um, you can see that until here, from 98% to 46.2%, MIK is rich. So this is the extract phase. And this, um, the other half part of the table, the other bottom part of the table, starting from here, you can see that 45% of water until 97.8% of water these are the water rich phase, so this is your uh, raffinate phase. Okay, raffinate. So you don't really have a set of data where uh, one row gives you one tie line, another row gives you one tie line. It's not the case in this uh, question. Let's see how you want to plot the graph if you are given the LLE data in this form. You visualize the problem by drawing a diagram. The inlet, seed inlet is 1000 kg with uh, XA0 is 0 0.235, XC0 is 0 because there is no solute in the feed mixture. So solvent inlet is 500 kg with uh, YA0, YA2 is 0 because there is no solute in the fresh solvent and YC2 is 1 because it's a pure solvent. So V1 you don't know yet, 
and you can read it if after this you want to find out what is the composition uh, at b1 then this is ya1 and yc1 and for l1 is xa1 and xc1 okay so like, like i mentioned previously you need to divide the composition into extract layer and the refinite layer so i've shown you how to do that in the previous slide so using this you can plot on the data okay here uh, this would give you the this part here is the yc mm, I think this one here is your uh, ya okay and then for the refinite layer here will give you the xc here will give you the xa so you plot like what you plot previously okay i want to stay here because i plot this in excel and i ask them to connect the dots so they connect the dots but this one is shouldn't be here okay this connection between these two points shouldn't be here because it's not a side line they're not, they're not related so here is your refinite phase and upper part here is your extract phase also um if you want you can also plot the point b2 mixture point and l0 point so for b2 the coordinate is uh, ya0 is 0 and yc2 is 1 so you just plot there for l0 the coordinate is uh, xc0 is 0 xa0 is 0 0.235 so that's why you get this point here so this is your point l0 and this is your point b2 and also you can calculate the composition of a and and uh, c in the mixture by uh, doing a material balance um, m x a m equals to l naught x a naught plus c2 y a2 so x a m equals to l naught x a naught plus v2 y a2 divided by L not plus V2 because M is essentially L not plus V2 and you know all the values already. Then you get XAM here is uh, uh, 0 0.1567 and repeat the same thing for C. Then you get XCM is 0 0.333. Okay. So then you can plot the M point here. 0 0.1567 here and 0 0.333 here. So that is where you get the points M, V2 and L0 on the graph. And what do you do with the acetone distribution data? So that is actually your tie line. So you can use, for example, let's have a look at this row 0 0.025 and 0 0.045. Okay, that is XA and YA. So we locate where is that point 0 0.025. Okay, you can approximate it maybe here. Okay, so this is your first point on, of the tie line. And YA is 0 0.045. YA is 0 0.045. What happened? Okay, this one. YA should be here. 0 0.045. It should lie on the line. Okay, it should lie on the line. If you plot 0 0.025, you don't know where to stop. You just stop at the line. Similarly, for 0 0.045 here, you read 0 0.045 for uh, Y acetone, but you plot it on the extract point. So that is your where you stop for the uh, 0 0.045. And then you connect these two dots together to give you a tie line. So you repeat for the next row and the following row until finish. Then you will have many, many tie lines, which I will show you in the next slide. So here, this is what you have if you plot all the tie lines together because you have many um, given rows for the acetone distribution data. So the black lines on this graph here are all the tie lines based on the acetone distribution data in water phase and in MIK phase. Okay, so back to the question, you were asked to calculate the uh, B1, L1 and the equilibrium composition. So here, um, you plotted the M point and unfortunately, the M point does not lie on a tie line, on a given tie line. So you have to approximate a tie line. So that's, that come, uh, that's where the red line, the red straight line comes 
stop. So that will give you this is a L1 and this is your V1. Uh, Previously, this is your V2 and this is your L0. So redrawing this one. So L0, XA0, and XC0. V2, YA2, and YC2. Then here is V1, YA1, and YC1. Here is L1, XA1, and XC1. So mixture in equilibrium. So this is point M. So at equilibrium, it will separate into the phases V1 and L1. And you can locate the V1 and L1 using the tie line. So these are V1 and these are L1. So you can read the compositions of XA1 and XC1 from the graph and read the compositions of uh, YA1 and YC1 from the graph. So if you can, you, you need to do this on your own, yeah? You need to try it on Excel, print it out or whatever. You just need to be able to read the graph. So from the graph, uh, let's say you read uh, XA1. So XA1 approximately equals to 0 0.12. And then XC1 equals to 0 0.02. And then for Y, YA1 equals to 0 0.21. And then X, um, YC1 equals to 0 0.75. Approximately here. So now that you have all these uh, coordinates, this is 1, and no, this is 0, this is 1, this is 0 0.235, this is 0, XA1 is 0 0.12. 0 0.02, YA1 is 0 0.21, 0 0.75. L0, you know, is 1000. V2 is 500. So now your job is to find what is L1 and what is V1 by using material balance. And so you can solve for uh, V1 and L1 by using material balance or level arm rule. But I, I like to use material balance because it gives me more confidence and it's more exact. So L1 plus V1 equals to uh, M equals to L0 plus V2 equals to 1,000 plus 500 equals to 1,500 kg. So L1 plus V1 equals to 1,500. And then for, for material balance, L1 XA1 plus uh, V1 YA1 equals to M X uh, A M. Or you can do it for component C also. Up to you. You can try. You should get the same answers anyway. So you know the values of XA1, YA1, M you know, XAM also you know. So you put in the known values. 0 0.12 L1 plus uh, uh, V1 times YA1. YA1 is 0 0.21. Uh, V1 equals to 1500 times uh, 0 0.1567. So here you have two equations and two unknowns. I'm sorry. So one equation one here, equation two here. You solve for L1 and V1. I'm sure you know how to do it. So I'm just gonna share with you my final answer. I get L1 is equal to 888.33 kg and V1 equals to 611.67 kg. So next you can try uh, on your own. If you want to use component C material balance, or you can use uh, label arm rule and see if you get the same answers.